So Go we're up. actually going to go in the old back side of the of the sub of the of subterranean mine. So. And it's acting more as a uh, air vent right now. You'll feel the air coming behind your back as you go in. So I'm going in. I'm going to go find Bobby. All we found was this. Thing that's a little inconvenient and we're splitting hairs here all right is because of the drawer system in the fridge I got to shovel things back and forth a little bit uh, when I'm preparing stuff but Parnell and I are making a kitchen that goes on to this arm of the swing out and so the way it'll work is this arm swings out like it is now and then it folds out and so this will be the stove and the sink, and there'll be uh, shelf space when I'm not using the sink. It'll basically be a counter. So this will be more food prep area over there. It'll give me a little bit more space to do stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna tidy up and uh, start getting ready to roll. We're all, we're all packed up, we're ready to go. Uh, but I promise you guys I'd show you this mine shaft. So we have to look down into this mine shaft now. There just aren't very many places you can go where you get to look down into a hole and there's just no chance that you see in the bottom. If you guys get vertigo, you might not want to watch this video because I'm going to hang the camera way over the mine shaft so you can look straight down. And uh, you guys see if you can see the bottom. I think the answer is going to be no. All right. Let me shimmy on out there with the camera. Does this look stable to you guys? It's not going to collapse, is it? There's no bottom. Holy. Now I'm gonna change my camera settings manually, crank up the ISO, get as much light in the camera as possible, then see how far down we can see. That's just neat. staring over here what are you what are, what are you looking at here well RIP my side steps <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, aluminum recycling
So we're actually going to go in the old back side of the, of the side. Now when you're the trail boss, there's a couple of ways to handle a trip like this. You can tell your colleagues all about it, all the trials and tribulations you're about to face, and maybe even blow it up out of proportion like my dad used to do. He used to talk about Rattlesnake Ridge days before we ever got there, and when we went over it, it was no big deal. Or you can do it the Kent way. And the Kent way is to not say anything about what you're about to face, and you, you watch in slight bemusement as your colleagues figure it out for themselves. As the day unravels and the shadows start to get long, they face those challenges and, and it dawns on them that they're in for an epic journey. Coming off, Dan. <laughs> it's not, it's not gonna come off. Now we went way back, way back into the lost country of Nevada in our final quest to find the lost mine of Jeremiah, the rattlesnake head biting miner. And the rumor has it, he was so mean that he'd bite the head off any rattlesnake that were to slither up on his claim. Would we find it? We were about to find out. Oh, I may have made a little bit of that last part up, just a little bit. I can't video and drive at the same time. So what you guys didn't see coming down is that we were on inclines on the edge of that uh, road. Uh, precarious. Whenever it gets precarious, I put the camera down. Uh, What an awesome adventure it's been today. Um, but it is a holiday weekend. And uh, you know how many people we've seen out here today? <laughs> Loaded question. None. Would have been better. Good, it's gold. Dan's gonna. Tighten up the lug nuts on that spare. This soft spot. This soft spot was too much for the trailer. So we're putting uh, some max tracks. It's a long way back. We're gonna put some max tracks, see if Bob can get up there. And if he can't, we'll turn him around and we'll winch the, go. the trailer. Go, go, go. See you back to civilization. This is why we carry spare fuel. <laughs> there it goes. We're good. Now we just let it dance. There it goes. Bob, talk to me about the uh, what you found up there. It's crazy up there. Once I cleared the sand here, it leveled, not leveled, it was uphill, but it kind of leveled out. Then 
boulders God, just yeah. teetered me in this on my 37s. Um, yeah, a little sketchy, getting teetered side by side. And then there was a couple little shelves. Luckily, when I got to the top, there was a left and got out of the rocks, but it was sand just as bad as we got stuck in here. Got I it. did about a eight point turn <laughs> to get out off camber. Yep. So that added the factor. Um, and then coming down was a little sketch, just yeah. again, going off camber on those rocks. You know the vehicle can do more than what your mind thinks it can, but you just feel that motion and you come back and say, I'm yeah. not gonna tell anybody. I'm gonna tell them it was a breeze. Bob, you should just be intolerable. If I have to fuel up, just be intolerable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, no mercy. Yeah. After about 86 hours of driving that day, we finally came to Bartholomew's Mine. Now what we found out is old Rattlesnake Fred, he actually had a number of mines back there. Now we had to check it out, but I uh, have to give you a little bit of caution here. These mines are dangerous, has to be said. And, uh, you know, it was all we could do from keep from getting lost, falling down, losing one of us. But we wanted to see the history and we wanted to strike it rich because we were pretty sure there was gold down there. Okay, now I got to do my public service announcement. If you guys uh, do come out here, uh, looking at these old mines, which is just a great piece of history. So it's it's just fascinating. Man, you really got to watch it because you're just walking along. And if you're not paying attention, you can't see this right here. But then here, let me walk to the other side without slipping and falling into the shaft. I mean, there's like, like it goes all the way. He found it. He found it. It's a ladder coming out of it. You gotta, you gotta keep your eyes open because sometimes you look down and there's like 28, 100 ounces of gold at your feet. So you gotta keep your eyes open. Oh yeah. Here, Michael. You can go in or you seen it? So I'm going in, I'm gonna go find Bob because I don't trust him. I think he's gonna come out and say, I didn't find nothing guys. All right, I don't see a hole, I'm going in. Do you see a hole back there, Dan? A hole? You see a hole? A vertical hole? Yeah. I saw nothing. Okay, I'm going. Hold, hold. Uh, rotten eggs or anything like that. No rotten eggs. Okay. Head on in, buddy. What if it's, uh, what if it, what if it, uh, uh, smells like decaying flesh. What does that mean? You probably got some old dirt bag in there. Okay, got it. <sighs> All right. Oh, you guys should come in here. It's cool. Uh, yeah, but it's a small cave in. Yeah, okay, I don't smell any rotten eggs. I mean, as cave ins go, you know, they're small. Oh, you guys. We got left and right. You know, a guy could get lost in here. <laughs> it's hard to tell, but I'm already way in here. I can hardly hear Dan. Holy. I don't see any skeletons yet. But here's a fork in the road. Wow. And another fork. And a hole. Well, let's go look at the hole. 
get the heebie jeebies. Oh, it's not a hole. Let's cave in. I'm sure I shouldn't take that as some kind of warning. Nah, it's fine. Now let's turn off the flashlight. All right, turn off the flashlight. Three, two. Well, look who I found, looking for gold. So this has been interesting, Bob, but we didn't find anything in here, did we? Oh my gosh, is that gold? No, no. These guys have been here before, Bob and Ken, and, you know, Dan, I think. And so when we were leaving the truck, I'm like, guys, should I bring a flashlight? They were all, nah, don't worry about it. What about hard hat? Nah, it's okay, don't worry about it. We're not gonna do anything like that. Uh-huh. Oh, hey, what's that? A gold vein. I haven't got time for that. <laughs> well, it had been a day. It had been a day after not falling in holes, popping tires, running out of gas, getting stuck, losing Bob in a mine, finding Bob in a mine. Oh, and you know, I never even got to the part where we were first responders to a brush fire. Fire Chief Kent jumped into action. We put the fire out while the volunteer fire department arrived later and got a standing ovation by the Nevada Border Patrol as we came on through into California for putting out the fire. Nope, didn't get to that part. But next, that evening, I had the opportunity to talk to Bob and Kent who had just finished the Continental Divide Trail. Now that trail is gonna be available to all you guys, all the records, the GPX tracks and everything. And we're gonna sit down with Bob and Kent. And in a future video, they give their pro tips if you want to take a trip like that yourself. So stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you on the trail.